Hi everyone, I'm Mariam and uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, how we can use uh, smart devices and smart data to democratize our healthcare systems. Uh, today there is an increasing demand for uh, moving the healthcare from the hospital to home uh, from the uh, increasingly mobile uh, consumer. The, the key to this uh, uh, by delivering better value for these consumers is the four P's of medical uh, health care at home. It's uh, personalized, proactive uh, uh, health care that, that, that can better uh, uh, give us better health care, but also can prevent uh, uh, diseases and make uh, predictive analysis about the overall trends in uh, health care. One of the big drivers uh, of this trend for uh, proactive personal health has been because today, as you might imagine, we're spending 80% of the cost in the system on 20% of the population with uh, diminishing returns in terms of value. This, uh, the hope uh, for us by personalizing healthcare, we can actually start to move to the left of this curve and deliver better value. There are many uh, different ways and avenues we're tackling this problem, from nanotechnology to genomics to robotics. But today I'll be talking about um, uh, how uh, personalized uh, device, smart devices and connected system at home can transform our lives. This starts with smart sensors that are part of an intelligent uh, management system that can get connected to the overall healthcare ecosystem and deliver actual useful insights where we can close the loops with end-to-end -end analytics and uh, useful insights. Today, if you look at it, the technology, we have a sensor for every single sense that you can think about. From uh, sight to, this is uh, from your development, to smell to saliva, we have sensors that can enable these uh, smart devices. From if you told uh, you know, your, uh, your dad or your grandpa that you can do an a ECG right from the comfort of your couch, you probably would have been laughed off. Today with a life core, this is a reality. Along with iNetra, you can just get an eye exam at home or, you know, there are devices for pediatric care as well as um, many, many solutions for our brain-computer interface. So we are in an area that increasingly uh, there are many, many devices in the market and this has partially been led by the uh, availability of the smart mobile technology for, where from the palm of your hand you can get your health score, you can get connected to your healthcare providers or get many, many services as easy as opening an app. Another important factor that I want to emphasize that's led this is actually availability of manufacturing and hardware technologies such as 3D printing or uh, nano print lithography that has allowed us to do low cost, agile manufacturing. This has really been important in bringing uh, consumer devices uh, uh, to home. But one of the key things in uh, actually delivering value for consumers is human-centered design. This is something that, if you talk about medical device manufacturers, they're actually not very used to uh, designing devices for a consumer. And that is uh, what will drive the actual value in terms of being adopted and what adhered to. One of my favorite quotes is actually that human nature admires complexity but rewards sim uh, simplicity. So this is something that we, as uh, medical device uh, manufacturers, we all need to think about because these are devices that need to be easy to use, seamless, and a part of everyday consumer so that they can actually adapt very easy and then become proactive about it. There are many challenges. I'm just going to put these three words uh, uh, on the board because, this, uh, as you can see, uh, these devices can be hacked, so security is a big challenge, privacy with HIPAA is a big challenge, and compliance with FDA. So there's still many challenges. But even with these challenges, there's predictions there's going to be 400 million uh, consumer medical devices uh, uh, by 2020. Hopefully by then, Trump will be out of office. But, um, but the key is that all these devices are going to generate a huge amount of data. And the key is, how are we going to make sense of this data? That's really, really important. 
uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning is not going to only allow us to congregate this data in a personal health record that is useful for us, but also we can now start to look at longitudinal trends. This is something that we traditionally haven't looked at a lot in healthcare, so that this can actually support the, the decisions we're making. So imagine we have all these devices and how we correlate this data, not only from our personal devices, but from the overall healthcare uh, in general, will allow us to make better decisions decisions and imagine that your doctor is uh, empowered or, you know, this is a picture of the Watson, but just, you know, showing that, you know, there's uh, artificial intelligence is going to uh, empower uh, doctors and consumers in ways that we can just not imagine right now. And this will allow us not only to uh, uh, make, uh, you know, decisions and predictive analysis, but also go from more uh, uh, where we've been uh, generally reactive in our healthcare to uh, more continuous monitoring solutions, which will allow us to earlier engagement of patients and actual success in healthcare. And uh, this is what I want to talk about. This is my company, Isona Health, and this is what we're doing at Isona Health. We're developing a platform that will empower women to take charge of their own health with regular breast health monitoring. Our platform combines an automated ultrasound with machine learning and cloud in a connected health platform for early detection of breast cancer. Today, uh, over 1.7 million women get diagnosed with breast cancer, 300,000 right here in US. I'm sure this has affected many of us in um, uh, one way or another. It has affected me and my family. And the key to deter uh, the surviving breast cancer is early detection, as is in many other uh, healthcare app. Uh, solutions. But today, one in three of breast cancers are missed at early stage. I want to say that again. One in three of breast cancers are missed at an early stage. You might ask why? Because uh, breast cancer screening is sporadic. It's inaccessible to millions of women, especially younger women. And for women who even do have access, the current screening doesn't work for half of them because the X-ray technology mammogram simply cannot see small tumors in dense breast tissue. And half of women have uh, dense breast tissue. And women who are high risk because of the family history or genetic, they need even more regular monitoring. That's something that's not available. So what is the alternative? The alternatives are MRI, which is not a scalable solution, and ultrasound. Ultrasound is scalable, but the problem is that today, the ultrasound machine that sits inside a hospital, the image quality is highly sensitive and depends on the skill of the operator. So that results in a lot of false positives and one of the results that's not being used. Today, there are many trends uh, trying to miniaturize uh, ultrasound uh, to bring it to the point of care diagnostics, but there's also trends to make it automated. Uh, this is uh, systems from G and Zimmons. Uh, they've done studies both that they've shown that if you automate ultrasound, you can actually reduce cost and uh, uh, detect 35% more breast cancers. And that's how we're exactly uh, uh, disrupting uh, uh, ultrasound and democratizing breast cancer screening for women. We are uh, making ultrasound automated and low cost so it can bring it to the hands of the consumer and all the technology, electronics, and sensors are small, this, uh, concentrated inside this small device. This device attaches to a wearable for accurate positioning. We have a mobile app that talks to the device. All the data is wirelessly sent to the cloud. And on the back end, what happens, we use machine learning to uh, uh, tag and identify different types of masses. These are three different uh, types of uh, masses right here that have been predicted. But the actual key to this uh, uh, system is that we use machine learning and AI to look for changes over time. So this uh, personalized, consistent monitoring time is actually the key to early detection. I talked about this, and this is the overall trend that is true about the healthcare in general. With our system, in just two minutes, you can scan your breasts at the comfort of your own home without any radiation, and you can get actionable feedback so that you can talk to your physician and make the right health decision at the right time. So you can do something about it when it actually matters. We've actually done clinical studies already. Uh, we've uh, been able to detect millimeter-sized masses. This is just some uh, clinical data. Today, there are over uh, 8 million women who are high risk, but I just put this number in there because by lowering the barrier to access, we're actually making screening accessible to over 100 million women just in the US. Imagine the, uh, uh, you know, how that would affect the globally.
And you might ask, why would uh, you know, payers care? Why would employers care? Why would corporate wellness care? It's because uh, it's not only a, uh, it's about saving lives, but it's also about saving money. Uh, each late stage diagnosis costs 10x more than an early stage diagnosis. So uh, this would cost, save billions of dollars for the healthcare system every single year. Uh, I want to end that with saying that uh, we're, uh, we're, we already uh, developed, done some clinical studies, and uh, we're on our way to market uh, next year. Uh, we're extremely passionate about this cause of making personalized, proactive healthcare accessible to all consumers so we can all have better, healthy lives. Uh, and with that, I will end right here. Thank you. Do we have any time for <coughs> questions? Yes, we do. Yeah, absolutely. So, so if you stay on the podium. Yeah. We have some time for questions, so uh, please, questions. Any, any questions? Yeah. If you introduce yourself as well. Uh, Robert Minky Miller. Um, what about thermography <coughs> and what technology? I didn't hear the technology that you're using in your device. Ultrasound. Okay. So uh, are you familiar with some of the th thermography out there? Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, one of the competitors is, uh, I didn't put them there for this, uh, for the sake of time, but it's called Circadia Health. They're looking at thermography. Uh, the FDA put a warning that there's no direct link between uh, thermography and actual uh, cancer cells, but they're doing uh, uh, clinical trials right now. So uh, one of the things, one of the biggest uh, differentiator is that ultrasound is a proven technology, and you only need to uh, 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 potentially uh, use our device for just two minutes, versus uh, for a uh, thermography system, you need to actually wear it for extended period of time because you need to calibrate against uh, normal temperature body changes as well as environmental uh, temperature changes so it's to be seen that if there is a, a direct correlation between thermography and actual breast cancer time for, we're out, okay we're out, we're out of time so uh, thank you very much thank you thank you